47 seconds of nothing but promotion. Now, I normally wouldn't have a problem with this because I understand that YouTubers need to make ends meet, but TV Sins is infamous for complaining about wasted time, so this sin is for hypocrisy. What the hell is this new intro? I sinned the last one they had because it was a step down from their original format, but this one is even worse. Listen, Gamala, Thor was clearly still rocking his thunder gut during the battle for Earth, so I don't appreciate the revisionist god bod representation and the resulting body image pressure. Discount Jeremy is an SJW snowflake cliche. Also, you're sending a high school character for getting a tiny detail about a historical event wrong? Do you see why that's stupid? But also, what's up with his evil eyebrowed angry Thorman Giants Bane face? Let the conspiracies commence because that is not Thor 616. Again, this is literally just an animation made by a high schooler. Why are you acting like every single insignificant detail should be exactly correct? Captain Marvel blasted in! I love this, but my eyes are hurting and my jump cuts need therapy. Discount Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. Having two documents with the same title on your desktop mere inches away from each other. Pointing things out on the screen. Remember, new episodes drop every Wednesday. Unrealistic content expectations. Don't let the content beast eat you alive, Kamala. Or else you might find yourself sitting in front of a computer trying desperately to stay relevant and funny while delivering five pieces of content a week and wondering where the last decade went. After hearing this sin, I feel obligated to inform you that your mission to stay relevant and funny has been utterly failing for a very long time. Also, the actual content of this sin itself was very stupid and was, at best, pointless nitpicking. This wayward string, it beckons me. It asks for cutting, it asks for pulling, just take care of it! Discount Jeremy has OCD. That's definitely worth a sin. We've seen this student driver crashes into a car that just happens to be the car of their instructor cliche so many times, I'm pretty sure you didn't even need to have him say, That's my car. When we were well aware of that the moment it happened 10 seconds earlier. You are, yet again, misusing the word cliche. Get a dictionary, my man. Marvel continue showing us the New York City skyline, but not giving us any info on the current state or ownership of Avengers Tower. So what you're asking for is the show to sit down and explain a totally inconsequential piece of information that has nothing whatsoever to do with the plot? That's dumb. No, 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 Bruno. Putting the nose before Bruno's name in your Encanto reference. Says the same guy who makes a million obscure references that nobody will understand in almost every single video. Hypocrisy much? I'm sorry, I really do love you. You're also apparently clairvoyant, because that's the only way you would have known Kamala already knew about the driving test bet. That's just not true at all. She probably just assumed that Kamala knew about it because she was talking to Bruno after the driving test happened. So, in other words, she actually used her brain, which is something you seem incapable of. Very funny. Very talented. Surely the art teacher can look past the tento horns and recognize and appreciate the artistry. Except the episode shows us that she can't. Seriously, why are you contradicting what the episode shows us? Then you're going to look yourself in the mirror and you're going to ask yourself, Kamala, who is that girl I see staring straight back at me? Choosing reflection instead of I'll make a man out of you. Pointing things out on the screen. I know fantasy's fun. Fantasy's really fun. But right now, I need you to pull yourself together and join reality. <laughs> this is get your head out of the clouds kid clicheing so hard right now. I have expect the thing to pop around the corner and ponder his big strong hands before Kamala flies away on the luck dragon from Shang-Chi. Discount Jeremy makes two pop culture references that aren't sins of the episode cliche. Also, he misused the word cliche again to nobody's surprise. It's not going to be another first Avenger con ever again. Ah yes, the short-sightedness of youth. The first isn't always the most exciting or memory worthy. Trust me. Discount Jeremy is talking about first sexual encounters in relation to two underage characters. That's super creepy. I'm sorry, is he airbrushing a costume in a convenience store? Yes. What's the sin? Oh, there isn't one? Then why did you add one? So can we stop acting like your mom is Darth Vader? Referencing Encanto Mulan and Star Wars within five minutes of each other? If we get a National Geographic reference in the next five minutes, I'm calling Disney Plus bingo. Yet more hypocrisy. You can't complain about a show making a bunch of references when less than 30 seconds ago you made a Fantastic Four reference and a Shang-Chi reference in the same sin. Why ride through someone's ball game? Certainly there are roads that you can stay on. I mean, maybe not for the sweet cinematic shot we have going on at the moment, but in real life there's no reason to bike through. Well, it's a good thing this isn't real life then. Anyways, the episode is showing us that Kamala and Bruce are mischievous and don't fit in, which is partially shown through this exact action of ruining the basketball game. It's called visual storytelling. We charge you for extra sauce and halal guys. Yes, the halal guys is a real place, and yes, I'm adding us in because it looks delicious and the closest one is currently 400 miles away from me. Well, maybe you shouldn't live in Tennessee then, you southern bastard. What no one here seems to be addressing is that if Bruno just made them this and is showing them how it works, then he must have also 
either bought and installed them smart lights throughout the entire house without their knowledge, or hacked into their electricity at the source. Yeah, but why do you want them to address that? Isn't it simply implied in this scene right here? Seriously, why is this a sin? Knock, please. Right? Always knock. I don't care who you are or who you think is or isn't on the other side. Doors are shut for a reason, Adam. Jesus Christ, this isn't a sin. This is simply the episode showing us the actions of one of its characters. It's not saying that those actions are good. Connecting your messaging app to your Starfield projector so that everyone can see your text on your ceiling. How else did you want them to do this? I feel pretty certain that you would have seen the show no matter what method they used to show us her texts. So you can piss off. The second. I don't know which is more convenient. That this full-length robe just happened to be sitting right there, or that her mom's suspicion meter doesn't go off immediately and keep us from the inevitable and already tiresome misunderstanding gets worse conversation. So you think it's unrealistic for a bathrobe to be on a person's bed? Really? And as for the mom not being suspicious, why would she be? She sees her daughter in a bathrobe. Why do you think that's automatically suspicious? Oh, Bruno Corelli Corporation. I like it. It has a nice ring to it. No, that says B. Corelli. It rhymes. That's why it has a nice ring to it. Pointless nitpicking is pointless. Kamala, please tell Bruno the Zuzu is possessed by the evil jinn. If you were going to do the actual light bulb turns on above a character's head when they have an idea cliche, did you really have to shove it down our ocular cavities by adding the animation as well? Except that's not a cliche, so I don't know what you're talking about, bro. I'll sneak back into my room just before my dad comes in at 9.22 p.m. That is a very specific time for your dad to come into your room. Does it mean something? Is there something you're trying to tell us about September 22nd? The Salem Witch Trials had their final executions on September 22nd. You know what? I'm just going to stop you right there before you get into your never-ending tangent on the Salem Witch Trials. It's boring and pointless and nobody wants to hear it. All this, and that's your note. Really? Did she casually draw this during science class? Has everyone gone home for the day and they lingered for the chalkboard and somehow the teacher was super fine with that? They presumably stayed after school in an empty classroom, which the teacher would likely assume was just so that they could study, and then did all this. What's the sin? <laughs> this is supposed to be the real world, right? Kamala literally just did a headfirst dive to grab a branch on a tree two stories in the air. As if this is just a normal thing teenagers do when sneaking out of the house. Why would she do this? Is she aware she's wearing about six layers of plot armor? You're asking why a teenager with super strict parents and who has been shown to be a little reckless would try to jump from their window onto a tree branch to leave the house. It's dumb because this is perfectly within her character. Also, a convenient pile of leaves that still wouldn't break the fall enough to do much is convenient. Let me ask you a question. If the pile of leaves can't do anything to break the fall, then what makes it convenient? Do you see the flaw in your logic? Stopping to observe the bus you're desperately trying to catch instead of continuing the process of desperately trying to catch it. They stopped because there is no feasible way for them to catch it at this point. What don't you understand about this? People who don't realize there are flashes on when it doesn't need to be. Narrators who are pointing things out on the screen when they don't need to be. Mala sets her helmet down so the badass gloves touch the disgusting bathroom floor. <laughs> who does that? People who need an excuse to lose them for a plot point. That's who. Or people who are changing and need their hands free to do so, as Kamala is doing right now? Oh, sure. Bruno's been into Kamala in this whole process this entire time, but just at the moment magic stuff happens, he's all like, I think I'll stare at the people on the stage nonstop now, so the audience will believe that this means I'm not seeing this, and that will stand in for the rest of this massive crowd who also is somehow not noticing this. How is it unrealistic for people at a costume contest to be looking at the people participating in the contest? What the hell? I'd like to make it clear that this not spherical Ant-Man noggin will land in water with the antenna parts facing forward making it difficult to roll and almost zero forward momentum. And yet somehow we'll roll a hundred feet through this warehouse, crashing into tables, demolishing a giant brick wall, and still having enough force left to give head to a load-bearing support beam. Physic much movie? You know what? I actually 100% agree with this sin. The head rolling around made no sense and it was like a Tom and Jerry scene more than anything else. It appears as though our heroes are panic pedaling home after a disturbing event. One would think they would ditch the light up attention grabbing costumes to seem less suspicious, but no. Didn't you just mention how they're panicking? With that in mind, why do you think it would be realistic for them to think of ditching their costumes? Maybe the first indicator that Kamala's been busted is that her parents closed the f***ing window she left open. Yup, that's correct. But why is that a sin? Clearly, Kamala and Bruce just didn't notice it. Kamala, where have you been? How has Kamala not checked the camera? I know she was preoccupied at the event, but she couldn't have taken a second on the bike ride home to see how things were going at the home front. Like I mentioned earlier, her and Bruno were both panicking during the ride home, meaning that it's perfectly realistic for her to not have checked the camera. Do you want to be some, you know, this cosmic 
head in the clouds person. She asks while standing in a room that is a vibrant shrine to a cosmic woman flying headfirst through the clouds. Yes, because her point is that all that stuff is stupid and unnecessary. How don't you get this? Bring her in. At this point, I'm just going to send a post credit scene in a Marvel production cliche and move on. Yet again, that's not a cliche. You keep using the horde. I don't think it means what you think it means.